In other parts of Maricopa County, an atmosphere of fear and intimidation among, among election officials has prompted dystopian preparations for every worst case scenario. Just listen to this from the Wall Street Journal. Quote, as November 5th looms, the election headquarters in the most populous county in the crucial battleground state of Arizona has become a fortress. You'd have to be a psychopath to say you enjoy this, said Maricopa County's top election official for voting by mail, Stephen Richer, a Republican. The building has added metal detectors and armed guards on Election Day as workers tabulate ballots behind new fencing and concrete barriers. Drones will patrol the skies overhead. Police snipers will perch on rooftops and mounted patrols will stand ready. Across the state, election workers have gone through active shooter drills and learned to barricade themselves or wield fire hoses to repel armed mobs. At the ready are trauma kits containing tourniquets and bandages designed to pack chest wounds and staunch serious bleeding. Joining us now, political anchor and reporter for 12 News in Phoenix, Bram Resnick. That is insane what I just read. Is that really what it's coming down to in Maricopa County? Are they seeing online threats or is there intelligence suggesting that it could get that bad? I mean, look, people are in jail right now because of what's happened over the last several years, the death threats to our elected officials. I read that story on Sunday. I know this, and I was shocked by it all because I know it's real. I know it's happening. These are the kinds of preparations they have to make. You know, it's funny. I've been to that county elections headquarters many, many times over the years. During the primary in August, I went there to drop off my ballot. I drove right by it because of the security preparations they had made. The whole, the wrought iron fence, the new wrought iron fence surrounding the building was wrapped in tarps and nobody could see inside because as we know in the past and likely again this year, there are gonna be attempts to video what goes on inside those 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 gates. Are they concerned about a, voters from a, polit a, a particular political party? Well, yes, <laughs> uh, not just a political party, but their advocates, uh, the random people who will just show up and do things. I think many of the groups that were active in 2020 and even 22 have been neutered over the last several years by lawsuits. So they not be, may not be out there. But as we've seen in these threats I talked about, uh, it is random people who will just show up and want to do something or it could be something organized that we just don't know yet. You said yes, but you didn't the party. I'm assuming these are Trump supporters because he's the one that's been these going on. Yeah. The, the, yes, it, it is not biased to say these are Trump supporters. I can't think of a single Democrat or a supporter of a Democratic candidate who has shown up in, in, at any of these protests. Is this the sort of thing that's um, changing people's minds in Arizona? When, when they see stories like this or they see the hardening of their elections offices, or are they thinking, gosh, I'm I'm not comfortable voting for a political party that is inspiring this. Don't worry about it. I I, I just had to wipe my lip off on camera it's, too. It's very television. dry here. Um, but are they are they are voters looking at that and reading those stories and seeing the hardening and are they thinking I'm not comfortable supporting a candidate who inspires that or is it not being thought uh, about? I I don't know. They Most of them didn't see the Wall Street Journal story. There's a briefing going on in about 45 minutes here by elections officials about some of those preparations. So folks will, will see it on the news. Uh, I think uh, it's largely out of mind for them. They've heard enough about it over the last four years. You would think it might have made an impact. It does make an impact among some who see their elected officials, county uh, board members in particular, who are deciding not to run because they don't want to deal with this. So some see... Some see it, but it's a large area, a large area, a large electorate. I'm not sure it registers. Are, are there enough volunteers? I mean, polls are staffed by largely by volunteers. Um, are there enough people to, to man the polls this time around? Enough, enough people who want to put themselves in that position? That's a really good question. It has been a challenge. They're offering more money. There were calls from more poll workers about a month ago. Here is something to watch on election night. We have a very long ballot this year. It's imagine filling out four 11 by 17 pages. 
That's how long it is. It's just stacked with stuff. It's taking voters a while to fill it out. That might be one reason why we're seeing kind of slow returns of early ballots. Uh, but also there is a concern that the, the election places are going to stack up on election day, election night with voters filling out long ballots. That could be a problem as far as getting our results on time and maybe creating more anxiety among voters. Bram Resnick, really good to have you. Thank you so much for joining us.